Let's continue exploring the universe within art and the art within commands. I'm your host, Amle Du, and in this episode, we're going to be looking at how to make multiple dialogue pages on NPCs using a simple command. Normally, an NPC can only have six buttons and one text box, but with this super simple command, you can link NPCs together to make it look like there are multiple pages. There is so much that you could do with the ability to have complex dialogue and multiple commands. And this video was requested by Game Odyssey, so thank you so, so much for your request. I really appreciate it, and I hope I answer all of your questions. So I'm going to start off with some examples, and then go over exactly how this works, and then I'll go over how to actually build it. So here we have a simple questing NPC that will ask you where you want to go if you accept his quest invitation. But then if you say no, you know, he will say something else. He'll be like, oh, that's too bad. Now also keep in mind that you can change the image that appears in the text box for the NPC, and you can also change the name that pops up on the top above the text. And so you could either be aware of this and keep it all uniform, or you can use it for additional flavor. Like if we, you know, threaten to rob him, but just say just kidding, you know, he might turn yellow so it looks like he's, you know, in a slightly different mood rather than a completely different NPC. You know, but you can do all sorts of stuff. You know, like if we rob this NPC, he will give us a diamond. You know, it's just the ability to do complex flavor dialogue is really nice, but then the ability to tie in commands to those complex dialogues really makes this to where you could do anything that you can possibly imagine. You know, so the way that this works is that you will have one NPC per page that you want to add to another NPC. Now, the other ones are probably going to be hidden so that you can't actually interact with them, you know, but each NPC will have their own page, and then you just link those pages together using the dialog command. And so really, there's no limit to how many NPC pages you could link together. You know, you could have one NPC that sells every single block in the entire game just by hiding a ton of other NPCs that actually sell you those items. Now, there is one limitation, though, and that is simulation distance. The NPC that is trying to be activated has to be within the ticking area of the player that's trying to activate it. So that means that it has to be within simulation distance of the player trying to activate it. So like this says, an NPC was found, but it's not within my ticking range. So just keep that in mind that the NPCs will need to be kind of close. Now, as for the commands, they are super duper easy. It is just the slash dialogue open command with some target modifiers to target which NPC's dialog box you want to open. And so you can either do this by coordinates or you can simply tag the NPCs and have a much smaller command. So like in this case, we just have tag equals and then the NPC tag that we tagged the NPC that we want to activate. And I'll be going over how to do both of these, so whichever one you're more comfortable doing, you'll be able to do it that way. Now I have also read that you can add NPC dialog files into your game folder so that you don't need an army of NPCs to actually target. But one nice thing about this is that you can do this all in game without having to mess with anything. Now the text files, it, it looks really simple, but I've never messed with it, so we won't be going over that with this video. We'll just be going over how to do all of this in game with NPCs. Now another thing I like to add is a simple back button. You know, this is really nice being able to navigate the menus and go back to previous options, especially for stuff like stores. You know, you can check and see what they all sell, and then you can always go back to the previous menu if you want to buy something different or if you change your mind. You know, and we'll be going over how to do all of this here in a little bit. But again, not only is this really great flavor, you know, just being able to have a dialogue with an NPC, but you can also, you know, set one of the commands for the buttons to activate other command blocks. You know, generally you do this by setting a redstone block somewhere that will then trigger command blocks. And so, you know, you could really, I mean, you could do crazy stuff with this. You know, in this video, we're just going to do some basic stuff so you know how to use it. I just wanted to gush a little bit because of how amazing this is. You know, I didn't even know that this was in the game until it was requested. But I mean, like this NPC, we could rob him, he could call for the guards and summon a zombie, as well as sell us every single block in the game. You know, normally this would take an army of NPCs to accomplish, but we can accomplish it with basically just one. I mean, that's, that's super crazy, or at least a player just interacting with one. You know, but now when it comes to building this, I would recommend hiding all of your NPCs, you know, underneath the NPC that you're activating. And to summon an NPC, you just type in slash summon NPC, and it will spawn one wherever you are standing. 
And if you want more information on how NPCs work and what you can do with them, you can check out some of my other videos. But for this one, we're just going to add some flavor. He's going to say, I do some stuff. And then we're going to start adding commands. So I think we're going to just do like three buttons. You know, one of them will ask him what he does. And then the next one will we'll have him teleport us somewhere. You know, and then the last one will have him sell us some stuff. You know, just to give some examples of how to get all of this done. But I would start off with the NPC that you want to the player to interact with, and then just start off by creating the buttons. You can create up to six buttons, you know, or six commands, you know, but you can only have up to six buttons, and you're also limited on how much text each button can have. And your buttons are going to be like your roadmap. So I would start off by making the buttons, and then decide how many NPCs you need from there. Now when it comes to selecting an NPC, you know, coordinates might be kind of difficult because the NPC will kind of block, you know, your, your, your sight. And now if you're looking at the block that the NPC is standing on, you can copy those coordinates, you know, by going into your menu and clicking copy coordinates on block position. Now, if you don't have this enabled, it is really easy to turn on. You simply go to settings, scroll down to creator, and then we're going to toggle the enable copy coordinate UI. Now, if this is turned on, it will add that coordinate copier into your text menu whenever you press T to open up your, your chat. Now, one problem with using coordinates to target NPCs is that sometimes it's hard to tell what block they are actually on, and you can't actually push the NPCs around. You know, so if you want to use coordinates for the other NPCs, I would recommend putting them in a hole so you know exactly what block that they are on. You know, or you can just use the tag command in order to target NPCs. To do this, we're gonna walk inside of the NPC, and then we're gonna type in slash tag, at E, bracket, type equals NPC, comma, R equals one, bracket, and then add whatever we want to name our tag. So like we were using NPC zero, NPC one, NPC two, but you could also give it actual names like main or shopkeeper, you know, or for this example, we're just gonna do N zero, in one, in two, in three, in four, et cetera, et cetera. And there's actually an easy way for you to tag multiple NPCs very easily that I will be going over here in a little bit. But first we need to summon more NPCs. And so for your hidden NPCs, I would recommend building this checkerboard type thing just to try to keep things organized. You know, not only does this allow you to like place signs to label each NPC, you know, but it also keeps them kind of separate. So when you go to tag them or when you go to get their coordinates, it'll be a little easier. And so for this first example, I'm gonna use coordinates as the target modifier. So we need to look at the block that the NPC is standing on and then copy those coordinates. And then we need to go back to our original NPC and we need to make a dialogue command with those coordinates. So we're gonna type in slash dialogue open at E bracket, and then we're gonna paste in our coordinates but we need to insert x equals, y equals, and z equals with commas in between each number, you know, to have the correct format. And now, sadly, it is not as simple as this. You actually need to draw a square selector with the coordinates. So we also need a dx, dy, and dz, all of which are just going to equal one. So the x, y, and z are going to be one corner of the selection box, and then the dx, dy, and dz are going to be a modifier for that selection box. So if you just have one, it'll just be, it'll just select the one NPC. But then we need at initiator to select the player that is interacting with the original NPC, activating the command. And then we're gonna go back to the NPC that we're targeting and we're gonna add our flavor and our commands and our buttons. You know, so we're just gonna write in some random text. You know, as for commands, I don't know, let's, let's, let's actually use a command this time. So let's tell him to sing for us and then we'll use the slash say command to have him sing. You know, we'll just target at all because it's just gonna be me in this world. But again, the possibilities are endless. You know, it's all up to your imagination what all commands you have the NPCs do. You know, you can either use like the standard methods of interacting with NPCs, like activating a single command on enter or on exit or with a button, you know, or you can have the NPC activate a series of other command blocks to do something super complex. You know, or if you have, you know, pre-existing NPCs in your world, you can link those together with this same method. Now, as for making a back button, all this really is is targeting the previous NPC with the dialog command. And so this time we're going to use the tag modifier selector. 
And so we tagged the upper NPC with n0. So all this is is going to be tag equals n0 surrounded in brackets after the at e. Now, just in case you have players that have tags as well, you can always differentiate NPCs from players by adding in type equals NPC comma and then your tag. This will guarantee that it doesn't select players who have that tag, only NPCs. Now, the type equals NPC is totally unnecessary if you make sure not to tag players with those tags. But if you're having issues, it's just good to know that that's how you solve that. And so now we have an NPC with a back button, you know, that will also sing for us. You know, how easy and how cool is that? You know, super duper exciting stuff. Okay, so now when it comes to tagging multiple NPCs quickly, there is kind of a shortcut that we need to go over to help you save some time. You know, so again, just when you go to tag an NPC, jump inside of it, then we're going to type in slash tag at E, then we're going to only target NPCs, so type equals NPC, then we're going to add a radius limit, so R equals 1, this way it only selects the NPC that we're like standing inside of, and then the tag, whatever you want the tag to be, it can be anything you want it to be. Now, you can always open up Notepad, write out the command, and then copy it so that you can just paste it over and over. Or if you type in slash and then press up, like up arrow or up on your D-pad, it will select the previous command that you have written. And then you can just keep scrolling up to select, you know, previous commands. You know, it, basically it cycles through your history of all of your commands. You can just cycle through it using the arrow keys on your keyboard. And then all you have to do is change the tag at the very end. And so if you're using numbers, it makes it super easy. You know, you just delete the number and change it. So in this case, we're doing N1, N2, and N3. And when it comes to choosing your tags, you know, again, you can name your tags anything you want to, but I would highly recommend having some sort of system. I'll talk about the system that I use here in a little bit when we get to the third NPC and more complex NPC chains, you know, but either write down what tags you've named what NPCs, you know, or have some sort of system in mind when it comes to tagging them. Now also, when it comes to the tag selector, again, you don't need to dictate what type of entity you're selecting. You know, like we did earlier with the type equals NPC, you can just type in dialog open at E tag equals tag, and then at initiator, and that's it. That's all you need to actually select the NPC with that tag, as long as players or other things do not have that tag. You know, only one NPC can have that tag. And so if you only have a single NPC per tag, which, you know, I can't think of a reason why you wouldn't do that, you know, unless you messed up or something and accidentally tagged other things, but you can always like remove the tags from those things with the tag command, you know, but, you know, if for some reason it's messing up and won't target that specific NPC, you can always add like the type modifier to specify NPCs with that tag, you know, or you can just use the coordinates if all else fails. But the tag should be quick and easy, just giving a single tag to each NPC, being sure not to tag yourself or other players with those tags, you know, and then just linking them all together. Now, if you're going to be using a ton of NPCs, that's where it can be really nice to have a system for your tags just to help you stay organized and cut down on confusion. And so for this example, these NPCs are going to continue branching off from this guy. So what we're going to do, or what I do, is when it comes to my tag, I take his tag, the tag that we're branching off of, so N3, and then I add numbers to that. So this first one is going to be N31, because it's the first one that branches off of the N3 guy. You know, rather than just continuing on to N4, N5, you know, branching off of the previous one helps me stay organized. And since NPCs only have six selections, you'll, you'll never have a seventh. You know, it'll just be N31, N32, 34, 35, 36, and there'll never be a 37 because there's not seven options on them. So in this case, we have N31 and then N32 as our two branch offs from N3. Doing it this way really helps me understand at a glance, like, what this NPC is supposed to be doing. You know, like if he's in 312, you know, that's the second NPC of the first NPC of the third NPC, you know, if, if that makes any sense. You know, you have like in 3 is like the third NPC from the main one, then in 31 is the first selection box, you know, option from the third guy, 
And then the N312 would be the second selection box from the first selection box from the third selection box. I really hope that makes sense. You know, if nothing else, you can create your own systems that make sense to you in order to keep up with what NPCs do what and what tags you have used. And, you know, you can always write this stuff down. I recommend always with Minecraft having a little notebook, you know, next to your computer or next to your console, you know, for times that you need to write stuff down. You know, but again, since we're going to branch off of N31, since N31 sells blocks, we now need the different types of blocks. So we're going to tag this guy N311. You know, since he is the third selection from the first NPC, then the first selection from that, then the first selection from that. And then we're going to tag this guy N312 because he's the second one branching off of the first one off of the third one. You know, <laughs> I really hope that makes sense. It makes sense in my in my brain, you know, but again, you can just come up with your own system, you know, something to help you stay organized. And really, even if you don't make a system and you don't stay very organized, you know, as long as they're linked together, you usually won't have to change this in any way, you know, so it really won't affect anything, even if you don't make a system. You know, it's just nice to know. But again, you know, from these NPCs, you could then branch off the the shop cells, you know, if you watched my NPC store video, how it sets an M like a redstone block that then activates a series of commands to make sure that the player has payment and then take the payment from the player and then give them the, the block that they're purchasing. You know, or you could do something as simple as just slash give, you know, whatever you're trying to accomplish, you know, it is yours to do from there. I really hope that this guide helped you figure out at least the basics of how to start playing with this. And really, by itself, the slash dialog open command is just like a foundation. You know, by itself, it's just flavor being able to do a complex, you know, dialog with an NPC. But when you start adding all of the other commands or things that you already know how to do, I mean, the, the, the options are limitless at this point. I mean, you can have crazy custom dialog options with, like, secret things and, you know, quests and progression and crazy nonsense. Or you could have one NPC that sells every block in the entire game. You know, it's all totally up to you what commands you end up using inside of your new complex NPC. And we didn't even talk about the slash dialogue change command. Apparently you can use that one to like change and update dialogue either for all players or for individual players. That would mean that you can create independent quest lines that every single player would have to progress through on their own using the, the slash dialogue change command. But I think for that one, you actually have to create the NPC dialogue files as a text file and insert it into the game files, I think. From what I've read, that's kind of what it says. You know, so if you would like to see some of that, let me know and I will do some research and try to figure it out for you. You know, or if you have any questions or requests over anything, you know, specific commands or other stuff, redstone farms, anything, just let me know in the comments and I will do my best to help you out or to answer your questions. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to like, favorite, share, and subscribe. It really, really helps out the video and leave a comment even if it's just to say hi. You know, I really love hearing from all of you. But until next time, I've been your host, Omledu, hopefully teaching you a command trick or two and reminding you as always, don't forget to have fun. Bye-bye.